If not, we'll entertain a motion to put the agenda as presented. So Second. Second. We have a motion to support. Comments or questions? Hearing none. All those in favor, please say yes. 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 Any opposed, no. Motion's carried. We have an agenda. Thank you. Roll, are you completed? Yes. We are. We have roll call. Next up, Pledge of Allegiance. If everyone please rise, join us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you very much. Next, we'll look for approval of the minutes of the January 9th, 2024 regular meeting of this body. Well, approval. Support. Okay, motion support. Are there any additions, corrections, or comments? Criticisms? Better <laughs> 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 not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got to deal with Sarah. Yeah. Yeah. Criticism. Let's just leave it with comments. Take y'all back. Yeah. Uh, I'm not yeah, it's election season. <laughs> not messing with Sarah. All right. Well, given the response, all those in favor, please say yes. 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 Any opposed, no? The motion is carried. Thank you. And my apologies, Sarah. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm sorry. Yeah. No. All in good humor. <laughs> Moving down to request for purchase. First up, we are to consider a resolution to approve a request for purchase to truck and trailer specialties in the amount of $13,740 for the My Deal replacement of the dump bed on Public Works dump truck unit number 213. Your pleasure. Move approval. Support. <clears throat> motion and support. Comments or questions or any background? Just, I assume uh, that we had a bed go bad. It's uh, it's basically to the point where we have, we need to, need to replace it to get us through the rest of the winter. Um, along with that, though, we'll be doing some painting of the chassis in the front and sides of the bed, um, axles, and the springs. So not only are we get a new dump bed itself, but to hopefully extend the life of the truck itself. So mm -hmm. by painting all that, so that will be part of this project. Kind of unrelated question, but on the same subject. How is the um, uh, yard waste truck coming. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, we were supposed to have last year. Yeah, yeah. Still waiting. It's like the money pit. <laughs> Sorry, I opened the can. Come on, I'm, Roger. I'm probably out of order. But. Yeah, you are. You're off topic. Yeah. That's for sure. <laughs> Dave Riegel, Public Services Director. Um, we keep getting told a month out, and it's been since fall. So yeah. it's like anything else, you're waiting vehicle related, but. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully in time for this year, at least season. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Right. Thank you. Okay. We did make the one we currently have make it through the last year. Yeah. Last year. Yeah. Last year, so. yeah. Okay. okay. So moving back to our yes. dump bed. Yes. <laughs> we could. Out of order. Any more questions or comments on the dump bed? <laughs> Hearing none. All those in favor, please say yes. Yeah. Yes. Any opposed? No. Motion is carried. Thank you. Number two, or to consider a resolution to approve a request for purchase to the John E. Green Company in the amount of $22,500 for the replacement of return waste line mag meters at the wastewater treatment plant. Your pleasure. Move to approve. Support. We have a motion to support. Would you like to know what those are? <laughs> um, I can guess. <laughs> uh, well, better to have a description. Yes, sir, sure. Um, the the equipment itself will be furnished and installed by the by the uh, company if it's approved. Uh, these measure the flow of sludge returning to the plant, and it also measures the bio level of that sludge, and then they determine on what to do with the system to keep it consistent. To, so it. Leaves as clean water <laughs> when it leaves the when it leaves the plants. That's a real low level <laughs> understanding. There's a, yes, there's a lot more chemical <laughs> issues that come along with that. But Darren just said, "Here, just this is what it does." <laughs> and, and I'm hearing it's an integral part of our process. We we yes. have to have these. Yes, yes. we have to have these. Okay. Any questions or comments? Hearing none. All those in favor, please say yes. 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 Any opposed? No. The motion is carried. Go forth. Resolutions before us tonight. First is consideration of a resolution setting the maximum asset standards to be eligible for a <coughs> excuse me property ex exemption. Poverty. Poverty exemption. I'm sorry. Okay, move to adopt. Same time. I'm sorry. I said move to adopt. Support. Thank you. Okay, we have motion support. Yes, yeah. yeah. yeah, sure thing. This is something we do annually. Currently, um, there may be some changes in the future. Um, the, the assessors across the, the state would appreciate not having to do this every year, but currently it's every year. Um, the maximum household assets an individual can have to ask for this poverty exemption is $2,000 at this. 
And that has not been changed. That has not been changed <coughs> for the, since I think we've been approving it. Yeah. And this is not a good place to ask it, but do we have any statistics on how many people avail themselves of this uh, in the city? Or I don't have. We don't have anything. I don't have that right now. I don't know if they just happen to have it. So didn't really expect you to, but, but we can. I can ask Kathy to get some for us. Yeah. Interested to see how, how sure. big the need is. Okay. <coughs> Anybody else have questions? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say yes. 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 Opposed, please say no. Motion is carried. <coughs> Excuse me. Next is consideration of a resolution adopting the poverty exemption guidelines for the City of Elma Board of Review to implement, which includes the maximum asset standards. Move to adapt. Support. Motion support. Go over this, those. Yep, this is the guidelines to for the any individual to apply. Um, also part of this is the federal poverty guidelines for 2024. We this will accept those. For a one person household, you can make fourteen thousand five hundred and eighty dollars, and each additional person in the household can make another you can add another five thousand one hundred and forty dollars per person. So that's how those those poverty guidelines go. Um, that does not include your assets. The assets has to do with your car. Your how you know the house and that sort of thing, but you exempt the house from that two thousand dollars. But uh, I will ask Kathy for numbers on how many people have okay. taken advantage of that or, or used it because mm -hmm. I mean making the type of money, it's yeah you are um, skipping by. So yeah. all right, thank you. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say yes. 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 Any opposed? No. The motion is carried. Thank you. <clears throat> Number three, we're to consider a resolution to allow local resident taxpayers to protest in writing to the Elmo Board of Review regarding assessments from the first Tuesday in March until it adjourns from public hearings. Move to adopt. Support. No motion to support. It's exactly what you just read. This will allow individuals that can't make it to a Board of Review to um, protest uh, the assessment in writing and the Board of Review can review that during their, their hearing period. Mm -hmm. It's been allowed for a couple of years now. Yes, it has. Yes, yes. Yep. And we have to adopt this to allow for our, right. our property owners to do that. Okay. Any more comments or questions? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say yes. 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 Any opposed, no? The motion is carried. Thank you. Next, we are to consider a resolution ratifying the investment, the following investment for the City of Elma funds. And we have one before us tonight. It's a nine month CD at Commercial Bank at four and a half percent. Your pleasure. Move to adopt. Are we read, do we move to ratify what, or accept? Yeah, what do we? I got confused there. I blanked out. Ratifying it. Sure. Okay, move to accept ratifying it. Support. Okay, we have a motion to support. Any comments or questions? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say yes. 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 Any opposed, no. The motion is carried and we've ratified the funds. So thank you, Curtis. <clears throat> Moving down to agreements. We are to consider a resolution granting conditional approval of a request to enter into a project development agreement, which is termed a PDA, between Johnson Control and the City of Alma, which will create a project plan for necessary wastewater treatment plant improvements, and to submit a finance application to the State of Michigan Department of Environmental and Great Lakes and Energy, which is EGLE, a, for the Clean Water State Revolving Funds, Conditional, uh, conditioned upon the final approval by City Council. Your pleasure. Move to approve. Support. Okay, we've talked about this before. You want to give us a little, yes. little more? Yes. Yep. Um, in your packet, um, yep, we have the the the, uh, the project development agreement, the PDA. Um, in that, it breaks down the number seven. Um, we asked you to take a quick look. You know, more closer look at. Within there, it breaks down what this um, uh, agreement would provide on Johnson Control side of it. The Clean Water SRF, um, we've talked about that multiple times, um, which is at our wastewater treatment plant. Uh, those um, applications are due for that app, um, process on May 1st of 2024. Um, as we discussed, uh, I think it was a couple meetings ago now, uh, the application fee, the um, Clean water, so this is clean water, the drinking water SRF funds, when we submitted that application, that was paid for by ARPA funds from the state of Michigan. So when we submitted that application, everyone that submitted that didn't have to pay a fee to their engineers for that because it was covered by the state of Michigan. This is not the case in this. So if we were to move forward with this portion of uh, this um, uh, development agreement, uh, the fee for submitting that application 
to the state for those SRF funds would be $53,730. Uh, the next two items in that um, that section um, are basically the rest of the project of actually doing the, the capital project. Number two, um, which is has number one, two, three, and four of the, the items underneath the, the capital improvements, we estimate that budget to be $15 million. So if we were to submit the SR, uh, clean water SRF and receive it, we could do all those projects all at once um, because we'd have the funds through that. Um, to go forward and we just have to levy those bonds like we're doing with the, the drinking water and we can go forward with everything. If we were not to receive those um, funds for the SRF, then we'd have to look at number three, which is an alternate engineering and costing, which as you can see from the dollar amounts for, for, the prop, for the engineering portion of it, it would be less because we'd only be doing one in three of those that are listed out in, in the development agreement. So those are the, the absolute things that have to happen with the, with the plant um, to keep it operational and keep it um, uh, permitted through Eagle. Then we'd have to, that's $11 million worth there. So um, that would have to go through some kind of other bonding source to get that to happen. Um, we'd have to, then uh, we'd have to look at the other portions of that um, numbers two and four, we'd have to look at later because we do have some um, projects coming off uh, that we've bonded out at wastewater in 2027. So we would have, we could look at those um, capitals at that time to to move forward with those um, uh, in a bonding um, scenario there. Um, as I stated here, if we were to get the SRF funds, if that's what the commission would like to do is move forward with doing that, um, the engineering for all four phases of that project um, is one million one hundred fifty-nine thousand eight hundred sixty-one. If we weren't able to get the SRF funding, or the commission decided that, well, let's not spend the fifty-three thousand on that. Let's just go ahead and um, go for alternate three. Um, the engineering on that would be eight hundred seventy-six thousand five twenty-eight. Um, as we stated in the, the newsletter, where the staff ran some numbers on the likelihood, the percent, you know, probability of getting the clean water um, is around 10, between 10 and 15 percent. That is based on the fact that um, during the NOI that we all we submitted one also, uh, they had 1.8, almost 1.9 billion dollar requests um, for projects across the state of Michigan, with just over basically 448 million. Um, available in funds. The state's going to be focusing on this round at least on PFAS issues. Our projects that, we've re that we're looking at doing that have to be done are not PFAS related so that's why we're looking at our probabilities being lower than, um, than you know, what we had with the drinking water. Now this is kind of what we're asking the commission on we should like to do. This is $53,703. It's not just chump change that would come out of our wastewater funds. Um, but it does get us in in the the, 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 the barrel to be looked at. Um, if we weren't chosen this year, there is a possibility that we could resubmit this application next year, but that's contingent upon if the state of Michigan doesn't change any um, requirements of the of the application itself and there may be some changes or some costs that we'd have to to add if we did it again next year would we have to pay that 53,000 every time if, if the second time if long as nothing changed in the application and we could just resubmit the application it'd be good for another another period if the state didn't say say section 4 was what it, uh, it was a, what are your um, uh, uh, end goals for PFAS re remediation they they took that out and added PFAS remediation plus any uh, what it, add another contaminant that they want you to deal with and if we had to go back to Johnson Controls and say all right well they added something else that we have to take a look at the engineer on something or look at some that would add some cost to that in the next phase but if they left it alone we could use the same application again to submit next year to give you some perspective our drinking water um, probabilities when we first started that one was between 33% and 42% if I remember correctly somewhere's in there um, of getting it and when we first got our first initial response from them it was a uh, we didn't get anything then they had the public notice period and thanks to you know GAWA and those that folks are working on that well health protection 
plan that was approved just in time to resubmit during that public hearing process to get us extra 10 points for us and that helped out St. Louis with extra 10 points so we both got our funding that we requested. Originally, even after that, we weren't gonna be fully funded, um, but after they went through the process of who was willing to step up and finish out their projects, um, some communities backed off, so the state of Michigan reached out to us and said, hey, we can finish out the rest of that loan request that you had. So we were, we were funded right. completely with everything. So but those just happened to all fall together for once. <laughs> it doesn't happen very often. Happen very often. Yeah. It all happened um, perfect, you know, at that moment, uh, everything just worked you know, in our favor that for those moments. So there's no guarantee here. It's a 10, 15% probability, $53,730 is, you know, it's not chump change. It could be used, it's something at the, the wastewater plant to, to, to update, but we wouldn't be submitting anything at all. So that's, that's why we're bringing it to the commission to see what you would be comfortable doing. Um, if that was worth the, I, I don't wanna use the word, gamble but if it was worth um the risk the, yeah the because it's so part that, of doing business that money pays for the engineering of the our plan or that's just the application fee it's a, it's, it's paying the engineer to do all the the, um, do the, the background for the application right. to be submitted okay. it's required by eagle that it, um, a certified engineer submit this application okay. Okay. so it isn't like we could so it's like have, a fee yeah. for the engineer to yes. help us yes. do that yep. everybody so, so we don't really end up with anything at, at the end of it or do we all you end up with is a score okay and then either a yes or no okay we don't get plans or whatever no. that we the plans would be the second the second okay. phase they're either if we got the funds that would be number two where mm -hmm. great we can go ahead and do all four okay. of those items and that would be that one one million one hundred fifty three thousand or if we didn't get the funds then we'd have to jump to number two i'm sorry number number three which is mm -hmm. the alternate to get the two, two. projects that mm -hmm. have to get done and we'd have to go through a bonding mm -hmm. process and they would draw those plans up for that what's needed at that point for that dollar amount exactly where is fifty three thousand seven hundred and thirty dollars going to come from it would come out of the wastewater fund okay and it's yeah. and it's there clearly we we uh, be eligible if, if, for that yeah. yes okay. if, if the commission so choose to move forward with that that's where we're coming from and it's completely eligible to do that but okay. it could be used for something else if we don't use it for that that's that's the decision yes mm -hmm. it could be used for whatever may need to be happen. like we were just doing those meters that was a twenty two thousand five hundred dollar Right, it's not like we don't have some place that we could spend this on, but, it's, yes. but I mean, I know, and we're grateful that we don't have any PFAS issues at this point, but are we at a disadvantage in the future if we haven't tried to get in at this point, or it doesn't really make any difference? That's hard to say. Right. State, I mean, the state changes the rules all the time, so you never right. know. Right now, right. PFAS is a right. hot topic, and it may be for the next 10 years. We don't sure. know. Um, do we know that we don't have PFAS issues? I mean, it's quite yeah. 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 Can you find any? <laughs> Dave Ringel, Public Services Director. It's a very good question. As of right now, it's it's not a problem, but we do have some that we are finding in the system. We have been searching for the last year and a half as a part of our um, industrial pretreatment program. That's kind of what we we're piggybacking that on, part of that same program. We have identified a region where we're seeing it. Right now, it is not a state problem yet. Stay tuned because the allowable limits may change. In fact, the horizon looks like they may be. Um, we're pursuing some other avenues and looking to do that right now, but right now we don't have a qualifiable problem, but it may be here in the future. And in the future, it could be a year, it could be five. I really don't know quite yet based on the information we're getting. Okay. Um, very good question though. Thank and you. Another question related to that is the communities that do have PFAS, and you know, we've got these plans that we know all the list of things that Eric just covered that we need to do and want to do to improve our system. If, are any of those things, what would be done if PFAS were detected, or does it, how does it, how would that change the plan if we did say, you know, can we identify an issue with PFAS? We need to address that. 
Would any of these items address that, or is that a whole other plan? Not necessarily, no. Is that any of the good that you're doing with this one, or? Not, no, not necessarily to treat PFAS. What we're looking at are wastewater treating issues for our PFAS emerging issues that we're finding. I would, as a staff right now, where we're looking at is trying to remediate, prevent it from coming into the system, whether or not that's pipe replacement, pipe lining, manhole lining, that would be an option. Um, there are ways, as far as right now we land apply, if our PFAS limits get lowered and our PFAS levels rise, which they may, we may not be able to land apply our sludge as we have been doing. We may have to have a, um, what's called as a, a water separator, where we'd have to install a probably a new building over there with a um, uh, compactor and basically compact the sludge, squeeze the water out of it, and then haul that to a landfill because of the PFAS limits. Or there's also an option for an incinerator, but I don't really want to look at that because of the cost to run an incinerator, other EPA fund, you know, licensing to do that. But that would be what we would look at for remediation right now with something to where we would um, dewater the sludge, haul it off, take it to a landfill. And number two, the other one is to try to prevent it from coming into our plant to begin with. Those would be the remediation options that we would look at right now. But the, the digesters that they're building and that stuff, that doesn't address no, no, that it, challenge either. No, it just clarifies, um, helps to treat the water, keeps the, it's part of the treatment process. It doesn't do anything to filter out PFAS or prevent it from coming into the plant. It does nothing to do with that. And so the solution that those with a problem, it sounds like, it, correct me if I'm wrong, Sounds like if you've got a problem with PFAS right now, you're basically just separating it out and the hazardous wasting it, right? Is that correct. basically what it comes Some down to? Plant There's no depends, removal of yeah, it or correct. negating the, the effect of it. Or Not that we have seen. There are some, there's some filters that I'm aware of. I'm not, we have not seen anything, at least comparable right now, to show the long, the long-term relief of them. Um, Put it an example, there's, uh, I don't want to speak for, I don't want to say Computity's name, because I know a couple of them that do have major issues right yeah. now. Probably heard about them on the news. Yeah, I'm sure they're going to be applying for it, but some of those communities you've talked to, they really don't have an idea how they're going to deal with it, because it's coming in, they have leachate problems coming from the ground. Where we've talked about I&I, &I, where it's mm -hmm. groundwater coming into the pipes. Right now, it looks like we may have an issue with that, too. So how far can you get with lighting, then trying to identify where it's coming from, going after those sources to help pay in those costs. We're really in the preliminary stages of it as far as the city of Alma is concerned, but I do not want to say publicly we don't have an issue, but right now we're still under limits. We literally just did a test within the last uh, two weeks. We don't have the results of those yet. That's our effluent testing to tell us what we, what we have and what we've treated, so yeah. those numbers are still pending. Right. But Thank PFAS you. is kind of, the, the, you know, in layman's terms, it's the new version of lead and copper. It's, it's an emerging contaminant in wastewater, similar to what we were seeing with the lead and copper rules. So. And right now, because of that, it looks like they're putting their scoring more heavily on PFAS remediation and processes right now for this year. Okay, any yeah. other questions or comments? thoughts from the commissioners on if we sh should move Do we need forward. to make a decision today? To Dave, do what was... That's what we would prefer staff because of the timeline we're coming up on for the application for the Clearwater SRF. Yeah, it's our, in our favor. <laughs> I'd hate to see 53,000 spent with only a 10 to 15 percent chance. And, and I don't know, Curtis, if you looked at the, the funding rates that we could get through this if we were successful versus what's out in the private market, what's going on in the private bond market right now. Sorry, Dave. No. <laughs> You're fine. Hi, I'm going to get away with not having a market. <laughs> so, <laughs> now um, we're talking about bond issues. <laughs> <laughs> I do those when I want to see it's on the future opportunity. Um, we have looked at it. We've looked at a couple of different options. It looks like if we didn't go this route, the best right now, and rates are changing pretty Right now, um, it looks like we would probably qualify for a 30-year around the four percent, four and a quarter percent 
Um, by the time we close, if we do get a couple of rate cuts, which may or may not happen, it kind of sounds like that's where a lot of the experts are leaning that we might, um, since we wouldn't be closing until closer to the August time frame, we might be able to get it under that 4% range. Um, in comparison, the loan that we're we would be applying for would be a 2% loan with the possibility of up to 20% loan forgiveness. Now the loan forgiveness part is even smaller than the loan part, so I wouldn't bank on that, but that option is out there. So that's what you're comparing to is a 4% loan versus a 2% with possible 20% forgiveness. So Some real dollars. Yeah. Some real dollars there. Yeah. Yes. When you start talking to to a $15 yeah. million dollar project? Yeah, yeah. That's what, yeah for everything, yeah. 15 million. Yeah, we figured we would be able to, like I said, we'd be able to do four phases of it cheaper than we can do the two phases without it if we got the loan. But again, <coughs> really big F, so. Yeah. Well, that 2% difference certainly is going to exceed $54,000. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. By a whole bunch. So. I'm kind of thinking this might be might be money you well spent. Sometimes you've got to spend a buck to make a buck, and when you're when you're talking about those kind of monstrous outlays of money that we would need to do, um, I think I would vote in favor of this. I'm way for higher odds, but ten or fifteen percent. Well, if I can correct me if I'm wrong, I think Eric, you said the ten percent was based on the the. the Portable water, right? Funds the, the no, ratio, or no, this is this, this is based on this is it's based, based on the statistics this, we ran for this one. for this particular for, the for this one right here for so the clean water expected to be right. applied for yeah. and and, and well, based on our scoring because there's we already know that basically based on their scoring model there's a maximum score that we can hit even if we hit perfect and that maximum score is only about five points higher than what last year the funding cutoff limit was and there was less ask last year so. That's kind of where we came up with that. I mean, obviously, there's not an exact number out there, but that's where we came up with it. About, about 16 to 20 percent of the projects that are going to get funded, and of that, we don't score in the highest percentage. So that's kind of how we. We were right around that 33 percent when we first started with the drinking water mm -hmm. side of it. So, and it's you know, like I said, it's you, you do you look at it as you know cost of doing business and just putting it in, or is there something else where you feel more like, hey, let's be more conservative and just invest that 53000 into a couple projects or a project, well, what that gets you? And that's that's really the question. And, and, you know, with the agreement with Johnson Controls, like uh, when Dan was here from Johnson Controls at the last meeting, you know, we can work with them on what we, what we have them work on. Um, but ultimately, we do need to get them working on if we're going to submit an application. Um, to do so, it's, it's not even a fun or easy choice, that's for sure. No. Question, if we did, re rephrase my question. If we didn't do this, we have to go back to Johnson's at square one who are going to charge us again to do whatever portions we are gonna try to do. If we did do this and pay Johnson the fifty-three thousand, and we don't get it, are we ahead with not having to pay them an initial fee to get the next project started? I don't think we're paying Johnson. We're paying the state, right? The we'll pay Johnson. We're paying Johnson. Yeah, and Johnson. And John, yeah. And John, this is for them to yeah. fill this puppy out for us and get it right. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, this fifty thousand is going for this one thing. Yep. It, it would essentially be a, it would be a sunk cost if we didn't cost get doing, it. Cost of doing business. Right. If you get it, then on number two of the uh, the agreement with them at number number seven there. Um, that would be able to fund the whole project of one, two, three, and four of those those capital items that fifteen million dollar budget, and then their fee from there on top of that fifty three thousand would be one million one hundred fifty three thousand. That would be your engineering, you know, bid docs, oversight, those the, all that would be included in that. If we went forward with the fifty three and didn't get it. That was a sunk cost, and we would jump down to number three, and that cost of getting for one and three together for the engineering's oversight, eight hundred seventy-six thousand five twenty-eight. So, okay. yep, that's that's kind of 
and that would be phase one we call right. it and right. then when your bonds mature and you're complete with the, what's out there right now in 2027 you would be able to go out and bond the second portion of it but that wouldn't be until that time period unless you apply again you apply next year for the you know it's the uh, same application yes, as same, yeah and that's that's those are all a lot of unknowns there yes yeah. <laughs> But if we play again next year, we don't do this, we apply again next year, <coughs> Johnson Controls is going to want some money similar to the $54,000 to start the plan for that phase. If we have submitted this and don't get it, is any of that $54,000 going to go to help us start the next phase? No. no. Okay. No. All right. If that's a, that's a flat no. no. Yep. Okay. It is truly, so be, it's truly a sunk cost. It's yep. just, okay. Yep. If, you right. decide, if you decide not to go forward with that, you know, submitting mm -hmm. the application, that cost comes off this, this okay. table, and then we would jump down to the cost would be for to do the engineering on one and three of the capital, which is an $11 million project. Yeah. That the cost for engineering and, and project oversight and all those things yeah. would be $876,528. Yeah. Okay. Makes it clear. Okay. So I think we had a motion on the table to begin with, but I'm not sure it was relevant, right? Uh, because the motion is to approve this, but there isn't really anything to approve in the agreement until so we decide yes or no what the direction we want to go. I think is that correct? Am I understanding that properly? I would think that's correct. For a conditional approval, approval. Oh, for conditional approval of this oh. agreement. Because oh. yeah. I'm having the since we've never done one of these performance-based agreements before, I'm having the attorney take a look at it before we. Okay, that's okay. condition. That's the conditional part. Yes. Right. Okay. We say yeah. We think this is okay. Let's have the attorneys look at. So it. the attorneys do it. Then it comes back here to decide if we want to spend the fifty-three or not, or are we spending rather, the fifty-three I, by going with the attorney with this? No, it's whatever you get. If you guys want to pull that fifty-three off, or you want to leave it on. I mean, when is the deadline for making that decision? <laughs> is that tonight as well, or? Yeah, he said. Really, really, the decision tonight is. Do you and Curtis jump in here? But the way I understand this right now is the, the decision tonight is do you want us to pursue the Clearwater SRF funding? If you do, we will move forward with the application as presented. Okay. If we do not get the application, if we do not get approved from the state of Michigan and we choose not to resubmit next year or next year the requirements change, we would owe Johnson Control 53000 and change. I'm going to round it up to 54000 if you decide to move forward without Clearwater SRF funding, we will enter into an agreement with Johnson Control to come up with what we can afford uh, without the SRF funding based on the bond expirations. And then we would move forward with that and then they would submit to us a plan for what we can afford and then we would have come back to the commission to say, are you okay with this? Staff recommendation is this will at least get one or two items off the table. Do you so choose to move forward with this instead of asking for the Clearwater SRF? Okay. Okay. Really, do you want to go forward with the the chance of getting it? Move forward tonight with the chance of spending fifty three thousand to go towards the project, with the low probability that we've estimated for staff because the fifty three or fifty four thousand, we just want to make sure that the commission is okay with us spending right. that money with the idea that we may not get the funding, and that's fifty four thousand okay. dollars spent that we had nothing to show for because there will be a bill for it if we don't get it so just want to make sure that the commission is all aware of that that because it's not a free application so the potential savings is correct millions. yeah yeah that's why we've given it to unfortunately <laughs> you folks tonight that's what it is. that's beyond our realm we could come up with ideas and recommendations but that's we feel that's your call and the reason that we're looking for a decision tonight is because we're already essentially like two months behind the eight ball where we like for the other one we started the application in november so we're already okay. put it's already going to be a very, kind of started very, down that path yeah, but we're at the point now with this deadline looming that there's studies that have to be done and information has to be gathered that's the information that's needed for that application okay. so so with that my understanding let me say that the way i understand it to make sure we're all on the same page 
the motion on the table is to approve this conditional agreement, to send it to legal for review, and then the staff is going to, you know, presuming it passes our legal review, the staff will move forward with the Eagle, uh, seeking the Eagle funding and spend the 53,000, we'll commit to that 53, 54,000. So is that clear? Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Everybody's understanding? Correct. Okay. Yes. yes. Any more comments or questions before we move to a vote? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor, please say yes. 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 Any opposed, say no. No. Okay, and I say the motion carries. And what was the vote, three to two? I think it's four. five to one, isn't it? I don't hear one. I didn't hear how many. I only heard one. I heard one. I only heard one. No. Only no. Do you want a voice no, vote or? No, no, no. I, just, I, vote? I didn't hear votes from that side of the table. That's all. So, okay. I believe it's five to one. Okay. 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 Thank you. Tough, tough Thank choice you. there. Yeah, that yeah. really, I mean, yeah. that's, I, that's, I hesitate too, but the, the potential upside is. I hate to not and then not have many people apply for it and not have taken a chance. I mean, yes. if the potential yeah. reward is so great that. Well, I'm wondering how many other communities are facing right, that's what I was difficult decision. Yeah. The odds might improve right. yeah, if some right. of them choose not to go forward yes. mm -hmm. as a result of the cost of all. So fingers crossed. Hopefully they yeah. will. But, <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, yeah. We'll move forward and yeah. we'll bring us back. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much. And again, I appreciate the, the tough thank choices you. that you're facing here. So. Staff. <laughs> yes, thank you, Chris and Dave and Eric. And Sarah, you probably did all the leg work. <laughs> <laughs> Moving down to reports of offices, boards, and committees. The city commissioners may receive the following reports by one resolution, or any commissioner may remove any items, any of the items within the section for individual discussion and vote. Tonight we have the Code Enforcement and Rental Inspection Annual Report for 2023, the Alma District Fire Board January 15, 2024 draft minutes, the Gratiot Area Solid Waste Authority January 15th, no, Waste Authority, January 16th, 2024 draft meeting minutes. The Planning Commission, January 16th, 2024 draft meeting minutes. The Finance Report for December 2023 and the City Manager's Report. Your pleasure. Vote to receive one through five. Support. Okay, any comments or questions? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say yes. 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 Any opposed, no. Motion is carried. Move to receive the City Manager's Report. Support. Got a motion to support? Oh. Here, here, here. Anybody? Zoned out. I'll be, in the, I'll be brief because the big one they discussed on the agenda. I uh, just wanted to let the commission know that uh, the state of Michigan did give us the go ahead with a request for qualifications for the transportation building that uh, the federal government gave us some funds for to build for the expansion of the service. Uh, the RFQ did go out on this Monday, yesterday, and uh, they're due back. Um, uh, February 22nd at 2 p.m. and uh, we'll see what comes in. This RFQ includes the the drawings, um, construction oversight, um, and uh, yeah, and then and the um, submit um, the bid, submitting the bids out to uh, contractors as well. Um, consumers Energy Grant. Um, this is kind of, I want to get some input from the commission on this one. Uh, consumers Energy has, again, this has been a while since they've done this, but they're, they've, they've um, uh, offered the Put Your Town on the Map um, uh, grant opportunity. They did this, I think, oh gosh, almost five years ago. Uh, they're providing cash awards, three crash awards, just three. Uh, one for 10,000, one for 15, and one for 25,000. Uh, they're looking for the three best innovative pitches presented to the foundation. Um, they're pretty <coughs> wide open with this. All they're looking for is something in your community that creates momentum, that builds stronger um, uh, sense of community. They did give some um, examples of what those, thing, those items could be. Um, but uh, well, it's really up to uh, the community on what they'd like to do. It can't be anything that's underway currently. It has to be something that you haven't started yet or you've been talking about and you would like to take it to the next level. So um, as staff, we just thought we'd kick that around with you and think, is there something that you see that well, we had all those meetings. I don't remember what if we had money. Uh, what we were, what we met about uh, doing an entryway as we come into Alma from that side. Of yeah, welcome sign. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or, but we talked about all kinds of fun things. I don't know what if that just 
that's we, we have all that information. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's what I'm saying. I, mean, well, I think so that's the one idea yeah, that would be good because it, you know, people would come in and they would right. see because they, they don't notice about the eternal flame of the that mm -hmm. we used to have from the. Yeah, we had some neat. Uh, we had some really fun. I was things. on that committee. We had yeah. some neat ideas that came yeah. up on on that. So I think that's worthwhile. And there's uh, what is the deadline? Do you remember? It is February fifteenth, okay, so and our next city, yes, our next city commission is the thirteenth. So, yeah, we'd have to have staff we have to have that kind of pull that together for you by because next meeting. Was, to I mean, if that's all right with you guys. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. We had public meetings on that, yeah. and all kinds but it was of years and years ago. Yeah, yeah it was a while yeah. ago. Yeah. Yeah. It was pre-COVID. <laughs> yes, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was pre-COVID. But I was excited about it. I mean, mm -hmm. because again, I remember before we lived here, when you go visit friends that lived in St. Ignace, when that flame of the to i mean, that was a landmark that people kind right. of noted us by. So it'd be nice to have something, you know, mm -hmm. welcoming people into Elmo. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah, that's, that's good. I, that's good. I have that information so we could, that would be simpler to pull together than yeah. so starting fresh. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, all right. Okay, well, that's yeah. It's something that well. needed for years to, yeah. 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 we used to be known as the plane when we drove by. Right, well that's the thing. And I now we don't have to it as we drove by. Right. So. Oh, so. Yeah, the flame is out. We need to relay. <laughs> well, my ex husband used to say, our love would last as long as that flame was burning. And here we are. <laughs> 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 so much for that. It much longer than the flame did. So much to it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, the uh, Alma Social District. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, we're going to have DDA meeting tomorrow night and we're just going to go over some final um, uh, looks at the, the district and the proposed common areas where people could sit. Um, and then the next step, sit down with the police department and walk through that with them, see if that seems like it could work for them for, um, for the enforcement side of things. Is that um, making it kind of a permanent thing? I and mean, we've done it, you know, it would be, thing we've, and we just wouldn't have to go through that. It, it would, would be, be a 365, 200. Okay. And any time you wanted, any time you wanted, yep. you could. Yep. Okay, I think it's good. Each individual um, business that has a liquor license would have to apply to the state mm -hmm. yep. um, as part of the district, but it would yep. leave it up to them. So. Yeah. And is it, uh, are we open to readdress the district and sh shape it in place in the future? Yes, we can amend it in the future, okay. but I, I was, what I kind of would like to propose is it's good for at least, yeah. at least 10 years. Um, yeah. I think I got to the point, we talked about it a couple months ago at DBA, and we modified a little bit, and we did put in some areas where people could actually sit, because you cannot sit in the patios that, say, the Braveheart has, mm -hmm. or ABC, or Blockhouse. Um, those are part of their liquor license for the interior right. of the space, actually, so they can't actually sit with that cup in that patio area, they have to sit in these other areas, so we want to give them places. And there's that. lots of other places we can put picnic tables. Yeah, yeah. so we picked out about a few a few areas to do that. Like and next to the theater, we can all go over there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, we will be bringing that back to you here in the next month or two okay. for a approval of resolutions to submit the applications to the state. And then from there, each individual business owner that has those liquor licenses will fill out their application and then come to this board and ask for a resolution to be passed by this board to, to support their application to the state of Michigan to be a part of it so okay. there's some other just details of you know logo and those sort of things yeah. but other than that we'll have the, the hard stuff done um, and also just want to let you know that we now have and this will be the first one going out the citizen email system uh, currently um, to take a screenshot of what it looks like on our website it's on every page as you scroll through our, our website where any citizen or visitor or whoever would like to receive emails from from the city of Alma. So just sign up, send it in, and um, we're looking to send out something weekly Good. on a variety of things, activities, um, great. Um, leaf pickups, snow removal, all those sorts of idea. things. I think that's great. We did already. And what's <laughs> nice about this, we're working with our website um, host that does this. It's a one-time fee for this module to be added. So I don't have to pay for sending out each one. Constant contact right. costs you per Per, um, every time you send it out. So um, this week I have unlimited um, 
access. Access, yeah, um, that you send out to the other. And so, so uh, I think it's a good start for that. If um, they're also working on a module for um, through our uh, web web hoster um, to uh, do texting. So if that comes back similar cost to what this was, this is only only this is a one time fee of eight hundred fifty dollars to do this module. It's kind of like the crash it. And the alerts that we get, yeah. right? Like yep. if the road shut down or yep. and that would be weather similar, alert or something. Yep. That would be similar to what uh, yep. John was telling us that once they get that module up and running, it'd be a one-time fee, and then we could send out a text message saying, "Hey, say, uh, this road is closed. Mm -hmm. and, you know, we've had a few of those lately, so um, we could just send those out that way." Um, and then, lastly, just want to have put everybody's calendar for next meeting on you know, February 13th. I'd like to go into executive session to um, on our follow up for my city manager evaluation. Okay. Good. Don't we still have the meeting next Tuesday? Yes, we will. St we still have our goal setting session right. next Tuesday, the 30th, right. at the library. library. Yep. Okay. We'll have some some food there, so. Don't go hungry. So oh, good. There for you, good, so. good, good. Other questions? A um, couple things. Uh, the website, I love the website emails and all that. Um, but as we all know, websites have a tendency to go stale real fast. Who is in charge of the issuing out or writing up and sending out these weekly emails? I mean, do we have they will, a they will plan? Come, they will come place? to me. I've had, you know, talked about it at the last staff meeting. If you have things that are going on in your department, submit them to me and we'll get them on there. We'll start that way just to get things rolling. Because I think it's important that we get this on, underway. And the way this is set up, it's not an exhaustive email or newsletter where we're putting it together four pages worth of stuff. It'd just be a couple items sent out just to make people aware. So I, Sarah's too busy right now, so <laughs> and like I said, she she did chase me out of the office the other day. So, <laughs> <laughs> I but yes, yeah. so um, but no. So right now it's you, but it could be yeah. you yeah. could yeah. assign it to somebody else. Yes, yeah. Yeah. You. and like I said, it's not going to be anything. I'm not going to write it for the departments. They'll you know write up what they would like to put out there, send it in to me. It's just me just dropping it in. Doing a couple buttons and a hit send. So, okay. yep. I'm not going to write the the newsletter for or their news piece for them. So, well, I wish you luck. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> that's, yeah. a, that's a tall yeah. order. Right? Yeah. It's, it's a great, hope, great, yeah, great it's idea. A great concept. Yeah. But yeah. it is a, if it yeah, a nightmare to try and manage. Yeah. Okay. Um, I guess with that, any last questions for, for the city manager's letter? All those in favor of receipt, please say yes. 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 Any opposed? No. Motion is carried. Thank you. Next up, we are to consider a resolution to appoint Casey Zayner to the Gresham Area Water Authority Board for the balance of the term expiring January 11, 2025. Woohoo! Mucho da. Thank you, Casey Zayner. Support. Go, yeah. Casey. Go, Casey. Right. Any additional comment questions? You no, know? I'm happy to say yes when I asked. So. Yeah. <laughs> Whose spot is she? She she taking over June Weaver's spot. Oh. Yep, she has the Alma resident spot. Yep. In, in more ways than ways than one, she's yep. taking over for Jim Wheeler. So, yeah. so yes. and doing a great job. Yeah. She's. I'm, I'm happy. Wonderful. She's like I said. I'm very yeah. happy. She said yes. It, it's going to be great having her on. Okay. Yeah. She's a huge asset for yeah. everybody. Well, speaking of that, how did the meeting go? The countywide meeting great. last week was it last week? Mm -hmm. The master plan. Yes. 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 Yeah, it went very well. Good. Yeah. Good turnout. Um, not it, bad. Yeah, not bad. I think it was very comparable to our planning when the planning commissioners all got together from around the county. It was very similar to that. Okay. The, the room was pretty, probably like over three quarters full. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. It didn't seem to me to be quite as high energy as it was roughly like five years ago. I think that one was mm -hmm. yeah. elevated at the mm -hmm. level, but I, I think when we come down to our more local meeting, start focusing on Elba. I think you know that'll kind of change mm -hmm. the energy for some of us at mm -hmm. least. That yep. when it gets more directly involved with us. So, but yeah, good, good, good point. Good. With that. Looked at five general areas. Okay, we need, to get, we need to talk about yeah. that later. So we're finding this point where Casey, all of his favorites say yes. <laughs> yes. 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 No. Motion is carried. Casey's been appointed. Yeah. Thank you, Casey. Unfinished business. There you go. We're going to talk, <laughs> talk some more about the... Uh, yeah. <laughs> any additional comments? Anybody want to start anything? No. 
what were you I, saying, Roger? What were you saying? There, five? there were five areas that you broke up into, and boy, I didn't bring it with me, and I can't think of what they were called. Can well, you, you, and I, you and I were working on tourism, um, environmental, um, safeguard, and messaging, and, and messaging, and messaging. Yeah, there, there was housing, there was housing, and and there, was and there, was, there was a housing, there was. Housing, economics. I remember the some kind of lifestyle, recreation uh, type thing. Oh, um, yes. um, employ employment, employment. What were they? How did they word that one? It was the very first one that spoke. Of, um, yeah, I guess ours was actually infrastructure. Is what they termed us. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. but infrastructure. But you had, yeah, yeah. It's you, all had to, you had to pick one of those things that you wanted to sit in on and brainstormed on those areas and came back and took it to the head honchos who were going to yeah. put it into a uh, readable form. So I had that stuff in here and I took it out. That's a good process. Yeah, it was, it was good. Okay, it was good. 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 Thank you for those to the tender. Okay. Uh, appropriations. Is there any interest in paying the bills tonight? So moved. Oh, uh, yes. All right. Support. Okay, we have motion to support. Any questions on the bills? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say yes. 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 Any opposed, no. Motion is carried. Commissioner comments. Lori, would you like to lead us off? Um, great job with our uh, city crew for clearing snow and stuff away. I know that was a fun job. I uh, they did a good job. And go Lions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Go Lions. Great. Michelle. True? Yeah. No. Okay. Starting to move into the season of the kindergarten roundup in April, so if you have kindergartners, preschool, state Not kids. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll just go to school. Sounds like fun. Fresh faces out there. Yes. yes. Little women opening in a week and a half at this point, so running the second, third, fourth, and the whatever the next weekend is, 12th, third, I don't remember. But yeah. Good play. Good play. Good play. Nice. Uh, Nice job done by the two directors on it. Some new talent in there that we haven't seen before. Some old faces, which is always always great when you get new people and old people and it, and it works. By old people, I don't mean me. I mean people who have been there. So. You haven't been there? Or? <laughs> new people, yes. Old people. So. Sarah. Anywhere? Okay. I just want to thank Jim for all his years he's served on the Water Authority and the work he's done and uh, welcome Casey. I appreciate her being willing to step up, so appreciate that. Uh, with that, we'll open up the floor to the members of the public. If any members of the public would like to address the commission, please go to the podium, state your name and address, and you can have up to five minutes to share your thoughts. Do we have any takers, Dave? I was going to give you a long uh, report on the airport, but most of it was live, so we'll, we'll just let that go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I well, appreciate that. <laughs> so with that, I think we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Come on. Support. Support. Did a motion to support. All those in favor, please say yes. 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 Any opposed, no. We are adjourned. Thank you very much. Have a great evening. Back Safe drive. Sludge. Sludge.